Hello, good evening, Radio One. Are you all right? Yes. So, uh, I've, I've got very little time. I'm used to wittering on. I don't want to... Well, I've already ruined a bit there with a, se a postmodern sentence commenting on how much time I've got has now become part of how little time I've got. Eventually, I'll just turn into gaseous form and disappear through the air vent. That's how experimental this set's going to be. <laughs> there we go, a minute of absolute nothing. Now, uh, what I want to talk about is, uh, is smallness. Now, it's, it's a disease that the Brits suffer with. Many of us in this room, because we're slightly lit, have got it slightly looking away, slightly feeling awkward. A British audience, largely, if we can work with what we've got here, so you have a massive cheer when you come on stage, followed by, go on, prove yourself, prick. It's the com <laughs> complete opposite. If you perform in America, you start with a, woo, 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 you can't possibly go, you can make us dislike you. <laughs> but we're going to start from a positive. Not a British audience. We'll start from down here, and then you have to prove yourself. <laughs> That is everything you need to know about British culture if you're not British. Is there anyone who's not British in the room? Anyone? Which countries are we from? Shout out some countries. Australia. Anywhere else? US, USA is perfect, actually, because that, that's the country I just used a minute ago. <laughs> and enabling me to lazily leave out large swathes. Not that I didn't have lots of Canadian stuff. Um, here's the Canadian news. Bear, snow, end of news. Now, <laughs> he's improvising on the radio. He's so brave. I know. So, uh, and he's heckling himself. He's so postmodern, he's now heckling himself. He's dividing quickly. <laughs> Wasting lots of time with tricks and no actual material. <laughs> so, uh, the point is this. When, you, when I went on stage in America, it was so, you would think I would want to go on stage in a more friendly environment, right? Surely you, well, you would want to be easy to come in. Not that you aren't lovely, but you notice it sort of awkwardly slips into tension in between each joke. It's, ha, 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 oh, my God, please let this bit go right. Ha, ha, oh, my God, I feel a bit awkward. Ha, oh, my God, am I doing it wrong? That's you. But the American audience, we've got no awareness whatsoever. Go on, buddy, you're from London. Use irony to amuse us. <laughs> right? And I, I bounded on straight away, and uh, instead of like, say I've come on here and I've messed about a bit, I've commented on the gig to try and make you lot feel more comfortable, because they were so friendly. The average British person, when they hear friendliness, it gets irritating after about two days. If you had friends that have emigrated to Australia or America, you get a phone call about three years later going, I've got to move home. They're so friendly, I feel violent every time someone says, Could I? I haven't seen a dog shit for months. It's not normal, Gary. <laughs> So I went on in America, that, woo, you can't possibly fail. And I've got that British thing. You know, like, when you, want, you see a cake, part of you wants to go, bricks, and smash it and run off. <laughs> or if you see a portrait of the Queen in the gallery, you'd like to draw a knob in the mouth, and you can't explain why. Or when you're being shown around a hotel, they go, it's the finest hotel in the whole of London. What a shame, I've just kicked a fucking sink off the wall there. <laughs> right? It's a sort of weird emotional Tourette's that's built into the... It's like an emotional release valve because we're so repressed. Because we so suffer from this morning. And I went on to this gig and they were, Oh my God, hooray, you're from London. He's going to be amazing. And without hello, without any comment, I went, You look like a sex offender. To a guy with a beard in the front row. <laughs> that's the first thing I said. And the American was like, um, Is that humour where you come from to call someone a sex offender? <laughs> Imagine, obviously in London, it's completely fine. You go on and, you go on and say you're a sex... He does look a bit like a sex event. Let's chase him into the alley and kick his head in. Not, just in case he's a nonce. <laughs> By the way, people listening at home are now going to be disappointed. The person from America in the room. Notice how I've not attacked them personally. Again, a unique part of British humour. When someone says, I'm from a country abroad, every, any other country in the world, if I'm doing an American or a Canadian gig, hey, he's from Australia, be kind to him, he's a visitor in our country. Not here. When someone says, I'm from USA in a British audience, everyone at home and everyone in this room thought, go on. Fuck her up. <laughs> That's the instinct of the British mind. And uh, so I started to try and work out what it is about us that makes us... That, but, by the way, she, can I just say, she's obviously not worth attacking. She's one of the good ones. She's got a passport. She's travelled. She's left. She is, by definition, not one of the horror shit. She's not one of those. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt her, Papa. She was so pretty, I got carried away. Now she's not breathing none. She's not one of those. Her eyes kind of went milky, Papa. We'll put her in the barn, Junior. It's not one of those, is it? Yeah. It's a bit of murder there. Steinbeck, if you want to make it intellectual, so you can... <laughs> well, you're not laughing at misogyny, then. Now, so anyway, uh, I, I, what it is, we're so awkward. That my, uh, this is my theory about why we don't even speak a second language. Most of us, if you're British, they say, oh, no, it's because we're an island. Well, Australians live on an island. They're bloody brilliant at second languages. Do you know what it is? Every single thing about us is awkward, uptight and repressed. Even the way we move our faces, the way we gesticulate. We're one of the few cultures in the world that point downwards when we're... Posh people actually point down. Excuse me, you'll leave my driveway, thank you very much. Right? <laughs> Working class people go back. You don't want to push me any further, mate. I will take you out. Right? <laughs> 
We don't move this top part of our face. Very unusual. Most humans in nearly every other culture, including English speakers from Australia who move their face, Americans move their face, not us. We do not need our top lip whatsoever when we're conversing. If we're working class, we use even less of it. We don't move it. So when we come to speak a language, what's the language most of us have contact with? Spanish. Most of us go to Spain, right? Has anyone felt the crushing embarrassment when they try to speak Spanish when they're abroad? What, what is wrong with us that we can't say buenos dias? The reason is to correctly say buenos dias, you have to go buenos dias, right? <laughs> Which is beyond the facial range of anyone who has grown up in the United States. It's like I'm being sarcastic. I'm not. The correct pronunciation, buenos dias, Anastasia. Completely correct <laughs> pronunciation. Think of how we speak here. Morning, 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 morning. <laughs> We'd speak with a horn if we fucking were going, ah, 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 sorry, Berkshire, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> To say, uh, I love you in Spanish. What's your name, lady in the front row? Abby. Abby. And, uh, <laughs> yes, expelling the B-A-A-A-Y, Abby. But you're not, are you, from London, Abs? Where are you from? Suffolk. Random. <laughs> now, <laughs> my God, Abs is so from Suffolk, she's going to heckle me with the quails there in a minute. Take that, you pikey brute. <laughs> This is a tomato, that's sun blushed, you Essex mofo. <laughs> mofo. And, uh. Anyway, to say, uh. To say I love you in Spanish, it's. I just think, chaps, the pressure's on with Italian and Spanish men. I don't think it's got anything to do with looks. I think it's the romance of the language. They say, in Italian, ti amo, I love you. Ti amo. An Italian man probably, he probably dislocates his jaw if he's enough in love. Ti amo. Look at me. I will eat soup until my love is accepted. Right? Have you heard an Englishman? Do you want to hear an Englishman confessing his love? If you'd like to come through to the conservatory, please, Carol. Thank you. I love you. Sorry. That's how we have sex as well, by the way, USA. Sorry, sorry, dear. Sorry, sorry. Apologising with every thrust. Sorry, sorry, dear. Sorry, sorry, dear. For people at home, that's me completing live on radio. Sorry, dear. Sorry. Now, of course, I am a... You looked actually traumatised in the front row. You look in a way. Look at me when I thrust. Look at me. <laughs> you look at me when I do that, boy. Now, no, the... Uh, we don't, we obviously, we don't. Do you know what, girls? I don't think we need to feel too bad about stuff like that. We've heard some wonderful stuff in this comedy series, people talking about body issues and our sexual conduct. I think we should be proud in the United Kingdom to be uptight, quiet, this tiny island. It's this reserve and stoicism that's got us this far. These magazines that are creeping into girls' heads about body shape or about their sex lives. As soon as you start dating, if you're English, it's a nightmare for a girl. Go wild for your man. Are you wild enough? Do you go wild enough in bed? Of course she doesn't. She's, next, she's thinking about powdered egg and tin fruit in the cupboard. She's an English girl. I get the tin bath out sometimes, half an hour early. You're not expected to do anything else. Now, I can see I'm losing some of the men going, easy, I like a bird to be a bit naughty in the shake. Right? You know those men that pretend to like women, but they obviously hate women by their body language? I love women, me. I can't get enough of them. I really, really love women. Why have you got a misogynistic claw of hate then, Gary? I don't know. I just Sometimes I can't even open my nuts magazine to look at floppers. Right? Anyway, the point is this, ladies, you don't have to go wild. We're not Americans, no disrespects, and I'm sure that is the normal way to have sex, but I'm trying to think of something that would work on radio, and I think this really is going to... I don't think we're make, meant to make like this. Yeah, 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 baby, yeah. No thanks, yeah? Trust me, two minutes of that and you would revert to, sorry, within seconds. <laughs> And it's not just that, the men do it as well. No wonder our young teenage boys' minds are warped watching this junk on the internet. Men talking during sex is the least British thing I've ever heard. Do you like that, baby? Do you like what I'm doing? Do you like that, you dirty bitch? Yeah? You like that, you dirty bitch? You see what I Yeah, I see that. Yeah, you see it? Yeah. Do you see what I'm doing to you? Yeah, I see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Having a chat. Is there anything left? Imagine if one of these couples went home and tried that. Do you see what I'm doing to you, Carol? I see what you're doing, Barry. Get on with it. <laughs> We're going to miss Asda. <laughs> uh, shall I carry on? Yeah, might as well. That's what, what that's called is a self-encore when it's gone mediocre, just so you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're in Britain, an encore is largely a, a nod to proceed if there's time. <laughs> we don't need whooping and cheering, do we? We just need mediocrity and mild acceptance. 
And there's one other thing we're really, uh, we're, that really gives away Englishness, um, Britishness, is we're one of the few cultures on earth that when we're on holiday, we don't have an urge to make friends with other couples. Do you realize how abnormal that is? Go on holiday with an Italian, a German, a Spaniard, or American. When they see their countrymen, hey, I'm from your country too. Let's chat, not Brits. The idea of another couple latching onto us fills most of us with unfriendly freaking horror. We'd like to build a picket fence around our sunbeds, ideally. Maybe a baseball cap with a net curtain on. Just look, it's the couple from yesterday. It's Mark and Carol. Fuck off. Hey, hey, guys, you found us. <laughs> then you have an argument back in the apartment. That's your fault for speaking to him. That's your fault. I've got that whole fucking week now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, any awkwardness that was experienced was intentional. You've all been part of an experiment. Thank you very much for taking part. I've been Russell Kane. Good night.